and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I have got a really lovely, easy tutorial called the Pie Shawl. It looks a lot harder than it is. Basically what it amounts to, it's a large circle that can be worn as a shawl, or if you're using a thicker yarn, which I'm going to show you, it can be used as a throw or a baby blanket, which is awesome. It's so easy. You guys are going to love it. Now, the pie shawl was originally created by Elizabeth Zimmerman. She was a genius when it came to knitting as well as mathematical formulas. And she figured out how to increase a flat circle in such a way where you only needed to do increases every so often. And then for the rest of it, you could go on autopilot, which if you're anything like me, it's awesome. You know, not having to worry about, you know, where do I do the increases and so on and so forth. It's so much easier. Now, I did find uh, a pattern on how to do a half pie shawl, um, but I wanted the full pie because this way, when you fold back part of the circle on your shoulders, you get this really awesome lapel. Now, of course, you can also fold the circle completely in half and have a semicircle shaped shawl um, that will just drape over your shoulders. Now, I would strongly suggest using a lightweight yarn for the purposes of a shawl because there's a lot of fabric here. Now, for this particular piece, I used, it was Lion Brand's Ombre Life. Thank you, Lion Brand, for sending me the yarn for this because this was so much fun to make. Really, I, I loved making this. Um, I used about three skeins, and the further out you go, you know, with each round, you use more and more yarn, essentially, you know. So, I mean, if you want, you know, a really big, voluminous, wispy, wingy sort of shawl, well, you need a really large circle. But I would really recommend using a very lightweight yarn, fingering weight, you know, like a weight of one, two, preferable, three borderline, because once you get into the three and the four weight, you know, like a worsted weight yarn, it's much more of a blanket. If you were to use a worsted weight for a shawl, it's like wearing a blanket, you know? So I would really suggest using a thinner weight of yarn. Um, and it is so, so very easy. And I haven't been able to find Ombre Life in store, so I'm gonna put a link to where you can find it in the description box down below. And you know, without further ado, let's get started on the pie shawl. Hello again. All right, so now you can get a better idea with this close-up as to how it's going to grow. So basically, we start in the center with some clusters, and then we increase by adding some spokes in between our clusters, and then we keep growing and growing and growing. It's very, very simple. Now, you could do more rounds than I did. Now, as you can see here, I did an increase right here. I'm gonna show you how to do it, don't worry. Did an increase right here, and then I did my regular rounds. Now, the edges of this, they're a little bit wispy and wavy. Well, if you keep going, then it'll be less wispy and wavy. Um, me, I ran out of yarn on the third skein, so I decided I'm just going to end it right here. You could keep going for as long as you want. You just have to keep increasing at the right interval. Now, I'm going to get into that as well. So I just wanted to give you a more close-up look as to, you know, how we're going to be going about this. All righty. All right, so we are gonna start in with round one. Now, for today's example, I am using Mandala Tweed by Lion Brand. Uh, by the way, this video is not sponsored, but I always like to let you guys know what it is that I'm using. Oh, by the way, speaking of which, this is the Colorway Dice. Okay, and I'm gonna be using a size K crochet hook, which is a 6.5 millimeter hook. All right, just so that you know. Um, and so we're going to start in with, of course, our obligatory slip knot, naturally. 
There we go. And because we have so many double crochets on the first round, I would suggest doing a chain of, say, mm, about five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then do a slip stitch to that first chain to create a ring, like so. And yes, I know my hands are a little bit shaky today. I'm not feeling too well, but I'm going to forge ahead. So if you don't mind, I don't mind. All right, so from here, we need our clusters. Well, first one, one, two, three. That's our first double crochet, but we need a chain two space. So chain two more, four, five. And you will see why when we come around full circle, no pun intended. All right, so... From here, we need to start our clusters into the center ring. And each cluster is four double crochets, and we need a total of five clusters. Don't worry, we'll get there. So, going right into that center ring with four doubles. One, two, three, and four, chain two, four more, one, two, three, and four, chain two, One, two, three, four. All right, so we've got three complete clusters. We need two more. However, that first double crochet that we did, that's going to be the final double crochet of one of the clusters. So we need another full cluster and then a partial. You'll see what I mean. So chain two. Do another cluster, and you can always scooch these stitches. You can compact them a bit to make more room. That's fine. Or you could always do a slightly bigger initial ring, say six chains or so. You know, that, that's fine too. So going in with another four. So we've got one, two, three, and four, chain two, and now we only need three double crochets and we're going to slip stitch to the top third chain of our first double. So one, two, and three. Okay, so slip stitch into that third chain. There we go. Ta da! And then slip stitch into the chain two space. Now, another way that you could have done it would be to you know, slip stitch into the, the first one and then slip stitch into the next bunch. But this way, it's, it's a little bit easier. So right now we've got one, two, three, four, and five clusters after the end of the first round. Okay. All right, so for round two, we need to do an increase round, which is a lot easier than you might think. So we're going to start by doing, from this point out, instead of clusters of four, it's going to be a V cluster, okay? So to do that, chain up three, one, two, three, double crochet into that same space, chain two, 
and two more doubles into that same space. And this is essentially a V cluster. And we're going to be doing a lot of these throughout this. So if you're not a fan of the V, pick another pattern. <laughs> All right, so from here, chain one and then double crochet in between the second and third double crochet. Don't actually go into the stitch, but go in between these two, like so, right in between with just one double crochet. Okay, then chain one, and then into the next corner, another V cluster. So that's two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Chain two, and two doubles. All right, so we need another single double, if that makes sense. So chain one, and then in between the second and third double crochet, do a double crochet. Chain one, and then another V stitch into the corner. So that's two doubles. Chain two, and two doubles. chain one in between the second and third double another double chain one v stitch into the corner so two doubles chain two two doubles and of course i have a knot it's not fun ha 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 there we go. No big deal. So I've got my two doubles, chain two, two more doubles into that same space. And for the most part, for this particular pattern, you're working into stitch spaces, not into actual stitches. So you're going to fly through this. All right, so again, chain one, and in between the second and third double of that cluster, do a double crochet. Chain one into the corner, another V stitch. Two doubles. Chain two. And two doubles. Chain one. And then again, in between the second and third, just do a double crochet, like so, voila, chain one. Now, slip stitch into the top third chain of our first double crochet to finish round two. There we go slip stitch into the next double crochet. Oh, 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 almost had it. And then slip stitch into the corner chain two space. All right, so we did the basic clusters, we did an increase round, and now we're going to do a quote unquote regular round. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Onwards to round three. Okay, for round three, basically what it amounts to is building off of the increase that we just did. So right now we need a V-stitch within this V-stitch. So chain up three, one, two, three, for our first double, then double crochet, chain two, and two double crochets to complete the V. because it's always V's within V's. It's very good. 
and I'm a very voracious crocheter. All right, so from here, we need to do a V-stitch into the top of this double crochet. So do not chain at this point. So just go directly from this V-stitch to making another V-stitch into the top of this single double crochet, the solitary double crochet. So into the top of that double, it's going to be two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Now for my piece, I didn't do any chains in between my V-stitches. Uh, I imagine that you could, although it would create perhaps in the end too many stitches. So I would say do it this way. All right, so I've got a V into the double, and now we need a V into the V. So going directly in. into that chain two space with another V. So that's two doubles, chain two and two doubles. And into that double crochet, we need another V. So that's two doubles, chain two, and two doubles. And we're going to do this all the way around. So we've got another V into the V stitch. Two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Now, like I said previously, I'm using a slightly thicker yarn because I would like for this to be a, a throw blanket, you know, a nice circular shaped throw blanket. And from here, another V stitch into the double crochet. Um, however, if I used a, a lighter yarn, this would make a great shawl. But I like the fact that this pattern is actually versatile, you know, or you could use, say, a mercerized crochet thread and you could make a really lovely tablecloth. You know, it's not just a shawl. It's more than a shawl. It's a way of life. <laughs> um, so then into the chain two space of the, this V stitch, we need another V. So you can do a bunch of different things with this particular pattern formula, however you wish to put it. You know, you're not limited. You're only limited by your imagination. I say go crazy. All right, so another V into this post. There we go. But I thought this would make a really cool and funky blanket, and I'm pretty funky. Chain two, and then two more into that same stitch. And then another V into the V. And basically what this entire piece consists of is doing rounds like this, where we are working into uh, increase rounds, doing increase rounds and doing regular rounds, which, you know, I'm going to show you that too. So chain two, and then two more doubles to finish off this V. And then we're almost at the end. I just need to do a V into this double crochet right here. So two doubles, chain two, two doubles. There we go. And then, last but not least, do a slip stitch into the top third chain of that first double crochet. There we go.
slip stitch into the next double crochet and then slip stitch into the chain two space of our first V and there you go. Now yes, this is wobbly. This is a bit wobbly. It doesn't lie entirely flat. That is normal because we have a lot of increasing going on right now. Trust me. Trust me. Just trust me on this one. This is what you want. All right. So onwards to round four. All right. Round four. All right. So to do a recap, we did our foundation. Then we did an increase. Then we did one regular. Now we need another increase. I know it sounds like, oh, a lot of increasing. Well, yes and no, because it's initially that we need to do a lot of increasing. But as we keep going, we will need to increase fewer and fewer times. Now that may sound weird, but it works. And I was really quite surprised with the results, but it works. It does. It totally works. So this is going to be another increase round. So going to start with a chaining up of three. One, two, three. Another double. Chaining of two. And two more doubles for our V stitch. And the singular double crochets. We don't have to worry about going in between like we did here. It's going to be much easier. We're just going into this space right here with our solitary double crochets. It's a lot easier. So from here, we just did our V-stitch. So chain one, double crochet in between our Vs. Chain one, V-stitch into the V-stitch. Chain two, and two more doubles for a finished V because it's very, very, very nice. There we go. And this yarn likes to tangle on me, but that's okay. I forgive it because it's so pretty. You ever feel that way about yarn? You know, it's like you get frustrated because it gets tangled, but you're, you're forgiving because it's just so pretty that you can't, you can't hold a grudge for very long because you look at it and you're like, oh, but it's so pretty. I can't, I can't be angry with it. All right. So I know I'm being silly, but I digress. Okay. So I did a V within the V. So I need to chain one and then double crochet in the space in between the V's. Chain one, V stitch in the V stitch. So that's two doubles, chain two, two more doubles. Chain one, double crochet into the space in between the Vs. Chain one, V stitch in the V stitch, two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Chain one, double crochet in between the V's, chain one, V stitch in the V stitch. Chain two, two more doubles into that same space. Chain one, double crochet in between the V's. Chain one, V stitch in the V stitch. And as you can see, this, this is getting really wobbly, wobbly, wibbly, wobbly. Um, but, and you may be concerned about it initially, like, why does my piece look like a record, you know, left out in the sun? If you're too young to know what a record is, ask your parents. <laughs> Chain two. You know, an old vinyl LP. I like my vinyl. 
So chain two and two more doubles. I mean, when I grew up, I had a record player. It was a play school record player, and I loved that. All right, so chain one, double crochet in between the Vs. Chain one, another V in the V. So that's two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Now the reason why you should not be worried about the wibbly wobbliness is because after this increase round, we're going to do a number of rounds with no increasing and that compensates, believe it or not, it does. So chain one, double in between the V's, chain one, V into the V. Also, for those of you that are going to ask, I have tried some other stitches using this formula, and so far I haven't had much luck, you know, um, but this stitch, the V-stitch, really does work very, very well with this particular formula. So chain one, double in between the Vs, chain one, V in the V. And if you guys have any suggestions, I'm all ears. I did actually try the granny, and it didn't quite work out, but I could be doing something wrong, which is totally possible by all means. I am not some sort of guru. I just do what I do. Oh, I rhymed. At least I can rhyme. So chain one, double in between the Vs. Chain one, V in the V. But I'm always fiddling around with new patterns and things. Chain two, two more doubles. Chain one, double in between the Vs. And now after I chain one, after doing my solitary double crochet, going to do a slip stitch into the top third chain of the first double. There we go. Slip stitch, slip stitch into the next double crochet, and slip stitch into the chain two space. And that is the end of round four. Now, yes, it looks a little wibbly wobbly, but after doing this, we are going to do a bunch of rounds with no increasing, and that will make a difference. Alrighty. All right, round five, six, and seven are all the same, believe it or not. So the next three rounds, we're not going to do any increasing at all. So it's just really a matter of chaining up three, another double into the same stitch, same space that is, chain two, and two more doubles. And then going directly from this V stitch into this double for another V stitch. Chain two. There. The yarn just loves to stick to itself. All right, so I got my chain two and then two more doubles into that same double crochet. So basically for the rest of this entire round, it's really just going to be doing a V into the V and then a V into each double. So it's, you know, pretty par for the course. It's just two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, 
all the way around. No chain spaces in between. The only time in which you do chain spaces is when you're doing an increase. And those are going to be happening, happening less and less as you go on. Because initially, we did an increase and then one regular round, one non-increase round. And then we did another increase. And right now we're going to be doing three rounds with no increasing. And you may say to yourself, well, isn't gonna isn't isn't my piece gonna be bunchy? Well, when you keep increasing and then you keep increasing the number of rounds in between your increases, it actually works. And it's it's like magic. It's fiber magic. And if it works, hey, I'm all for it. And it does. So I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around for the rest of this round. Just doing uh, V stitches into my doubles and V stitches into my V stitches and so on and so forth all the way around until I reach the very beginning after I do a V stitch into this double crochet right here and slip stitch to the top of this one, slip stitch in here, slip stitch in here. That will be the end of round five. And then round six and seven, I'm just going to do a V-stitch into each V-stitch as I go around. So it's going to be three rounds with no increases. Okay, so I will meet back up with you when we're ready to go on to round eight. Okay, we're going to do round eight, but before we do that, wanted to finish round seven first, you know, just to show you, you know, a little, little bit of a recap, you know, I just need to do one more V within the V for round seven. So you know what to do. It's just two doubles, a chain two, and two doubles. Now, thing is, is that when you reach the end of one of your segments in between your increases, you know, the, the rounds before the next increase, well, it can seem a little like, what's going on here? And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do my last slip stitch to the top third chain. This one's going to be a little bit tricky, but you know me. Perseverance and persistence pay off. Let's see, I made that chain a little bit too tight when I did my initial chain three, and that is why I should have been a little bit looser, but you know me, I've got a death grip. And there we go, okay. A little bit of perseverance and persistence, and I persevere. And there we go. Okay, so now what I was talking about, it gets a little bit weird because when I lay out my piece, oh, look, it's curling a little bit as, you know, it's sort of cupping inwards. Now, that is because what I did was I did, as you can see right here, we have our increase round where we have our single posts, and then I did three rounds with no increases, right? Well... After you get to a certain point, it's like, all right, we're, we're going to now create a cup shape, okay? Sort of like when you're making a hat and you start from the center and you do X number of increase rounds and then you stop increasing and just do a stitch per stitch when you're making a hat. And because you're not increasing nor decreasing, it creates a cylindrical shape. Well, we don't want that to happen. No, no, no. We want to keep increasing. So if you recall, after our base and an increase, we did one regular round, then an increase round. Then we did uh, three regular rounds. We're going to do another increase round. Then it will be six regular rounds 
then an increase round, then 12 regular rounds, then another increase round, then 24 if you want to go this, if you want to go so far, you know, I mean, it totally depends. So basically, it's a matter of doubling the number of rounds. After this point, you just keep doubling the number of rounds, then do an increase round, double the number of rounds again, do another increase round, you know, so basically, I went from one to three, I know that's not <laughs> I know that one plus one does not equal three, but this worked. So I went from one regular round, increase round, three regular rounds, going to do another increase round. Then, so it's from three, then six, then 12. And then, if, you know, by 24, if your piece isn't big enough yet, my goodness, <laughs> you know, maybe if you're doing a, a blanket or if you're using a really, really fine, 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 thread and a small gauge hook, you might need more than 24 rounds. But what I'm trying to say, though, is basically this is the formula and this is how it works. So after three rounds, increase round, six rounds, increase round, 12 rounds, increase round. You know, and when I'm saying three, six, 12, 24, you know, those rounds, you're not doing anything different. You're just doing a V within the V. And those increments, 3, 6, 12, 24, are separated by one increase round. It's that simple, really. And I know I probably should have said this closer to the beginning of the tutorial, but I wanted to, I wanted a little bit of suspense, you know, just a little bit. So basically from here, since we did our three rounds, the next round would be an increase round. And so we'll recap that real quick. So I'm slip stitching into my next double and then into the chain two space, right? And then chain up three, a little bit looser, and then another double, and then a chain two, and then two more double crochets. Now the thing is, is that the reason why I wanted to show you what it looks like, by the way, from here, chain one, one double crochet in between the Vs. That's how we do our increases. Now, because we went three rounds without increasing, it starts to pucker, okay? Now, when you get up to, you know, either 12 rounds or 24 rounds, if you do the full 24 rounds before the next increase, it is going to start to pucker. Now, if you ended your piece like one or two rounds after the increase, okay, it's going to be very, very ripply. That's what I was talking about before, how it's very ripply and wispy and, you know, wavy and so forth. That's because I only did about eight rounds or so out of that potential 24. So it's still very wavy. Now, if I did more rounds, it would be less wispy and wavy, but getting closer and closer to having that sort of cupping, you know, um, it's almost like the equivalent of a, a tight bind off you know, when you're knitting um, and how it tends to pucker on itself. And that, to me, that that's unattractive, you know. So it's a matter of trying to find sort of a, a middle ground. Um, so when you're doing your your last increment, whether it's the, the 12 rounds or the 24 rounds, what I would strongly suggest is not necessarily doing all 24 rounds, perhaps leave off in the middle or closer to the end, but not the absolute end, because then it's going to start to cup a little bit. And personally, eh, I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather it be wispy and wavy than puckered and cupped. You know, that that's just my personal opinion. And of course, you know, to each their own by all means. And I always say, 
do what works for you. Now, as far as the, the yardage involved, totally, totally subjective. You know, it depends on your hook size, depends on your gauge, depends on the size that you want. So, you know, for those of you that are probably going to ask, how much yardage do I need? Well, my personal suggestion with this project, as with so many others, is buy more yarn than you think you're going to possibly need. Hang on to your receipt and don't return, sorry, and don't uh, use, you know, your, your unused skeins. Just return them, you know, hang on to your receipt, return what you don't use, and there you go. Or add it to your stash. But yes, buy more than you think you're going to need. And keep in mind that because this is a circular piece, you know, you are going to need quite a bit of yarn. So I would say if the yarn has a dye lot, buy a ton of it. If it doesn't have a dye lot, buy as you go. You know, like Red Heart Super Saver or uh, Karen One Pound, something like that. If you're using a yarn like that, you can just, you know, worry about it later, you know. Or this would make a great stash buster, as long of, of course, as long as all of your yarn is of the same weight. Otherwise, it's going to be really wibbly wobbly, you know, even more so than you might care for. So with that being said, I really hope that you like this tutorial. And so I'm going to lay this out. Give me one second. Alrighty, so as you can see, this yarn, the Mandala Tweed, it creates such a beautiful transition of colorways. I love it, and I think that for a throw blanket that this would come out very nicely. So listen, if you guys like this video, and I hope so because I had so much fun with this one, uh, if you liked it, please give a little thumbs up button down below because I appreciate your appreciation and your support oh so much. And uh, also, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so because I try to post often, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narration. And also my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games. I do video game playthrough and commentary. It's a lot of fun and I'd like to see you there too. Um, also, of course, um, as far as this particular yarn, I found this at Walmart, um, fairly reasonably priced. Um, you know what, I'm also going to put a link in the description box where you can find this online as well. So between this and the Ombre Life, I'll put some links and also to my YouTube channel, uh, Fiber Spider Games, and also to my Etsy store. Now, on a little side note, um, I have been experimenting with needle felting. And I was thinking about perhaps at some point doing a tutorial on that. And I'd like to hear your thoughts. Give me one second. I got some little friends I want you to meet. This little guy is my first, my first attempt at needle felting. And this is made out of raw wool and a rather sharp needle that has barbs on it called a felting needle. And so this, this was fluff. This was like polyfill. And after a lot of, you know, stabbing the, the wool with the needle and shaping and crafting and so forth, I created this little guy. He reminds me sort of a, like a fennec fox, you know, originally supposed to be a bunny. Then it was sort of a mouse. And it, I don't know, it kind of makes me think of a little fennec fox. And so this was my first attempt. And then... I made this little guy, this little owl, and he's got a cute little tail. And uh, so this, this, these are my first attempts. And so if you guys are interested in me perhaps teaching how to needle felt, or if you have any interest in that, please let me know also in the comments section. Now, I know these are kind of, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to say crude, but, you know, these aren't very good. Um, but these are my first attempts, so please be kind. Um, but they're just so adorable to me, and they've got so much personality, and I wanted to share them with you guys just as a little side note. All right, so uh, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.